Welcome to Tomorrow's World. All of us want to be happy, but true lasting happiness eludes many. How about you? Are you enjoying life or are you merely enduring it? On an individual level, every year thousands of people are so unhappy they choose not to continue life. Many more people live with constant depression. Others are simply unhappy but manage to go about their day-to-day -day business. They're too busy just trying to make ends meet and meet various deadlines and schedules that they don't have time to consider whether they are happy or not. Then there are the contented ones, those who are not unhappy or depressed, but neither do they find life exciting and meaningful. They get up, go to work, come home, sit in front of the television or their computer, go to bed, get up, go to work, etc., etc., etc. They have enough food, clothing, and shelter, but they have no great goal or purpose in life. They are neither bored with life nor thrilled by it. And how about relationships? Some of you watching this program are married. Are you truly happy in your marriage? Or are you just going through the motions? And if you're single, are you frustrated by the opposite sex? Some of the comments that follow articles on singleness indicate that there's a war going on out there. Men are angry with women, and women are angry with men. Shouldn't there be more to life than all of this? Is it possible to be truly happy? Yes, it is. On today's program, I'm going to give you five keys to happiness. Stay tuned. A warm welcome again to Tomorrow's World, where on today's program, I'm going to share with you five keys to happiness. If you're unhappy, these keys can give you direction, meaning, and purpose in life. And they can add greater richness to an already happy life. Each key builds on the ones that go before, so you can't skip one and go to the next. Each is important, and each is essential if you want to be truly happy. So let's get started. Happiness key number one is there is a real Creator God. Discover Him. You might be thinking right now whether God exists or not has absolutely nothing to do with my happiness. And if you think that way, you're wrong. God's existence has everything to do with your happiness. Without God there can be no lasting purpose in life. Our physical existence is only temporary. How can it not leave you empty if this is all there is? But if God truly does exist, then maybe there is a purpose to life, an everlasting purpose for your being. There was a time when the existence of a Creator was generally accepted, but that is no longer the case. In many circles today, you are considered ignorant and superstitious if you believe that there is a God. Blind chance and evolution are now the foundation upon which both physical and social sciences are founded. But as explained on previous Tomorrow's World programs, modern discoveries have shown that life is far more complex than was originally thought. Consider once again the example of the protein collagen. That pesky protein just won't go away. But how did it get here in the first place? Probability has been studied at length and it serves to illustrate a truth that we cannot explain away. Many sporting events start with a referee flipping a coin. 
One side of the coin is usually referred to as heads and the other side as tails. When the coin is tossed in the air, turning over and over again until it falls to the ground, it has a 50-50 chance of coming up heads and a 50-50 chance that it will come up tails. Each time it is flipped, the odds stay the same. Let us imagine that we have a hat containing 20 letters of an alphabet in it. Let us now imagine that we have 1,055 hats sitting side by side, and each one containing those 20 different letters. Your task is to reach into the first hat and pull out a letter to begin a word in a sentence that has 1,055 letters. For the sake of the exercise, let us say that the first word in our long sentence is the word the. You reach into the first hat and you have one chance in 20 of pulling out the T. The odds are not good, but it could happen. Now you move to the second hat, hoping to pull out the letter H. Again, it could happen, but the likelihood of having TH come out of the first two hats jumps to 20 times 20, or one chance and 400. Now go to the third hat where you need the letter E. Again, we have a 1 in 20 chance, but the odds of pulling out all three letters in the correct order the first time is 1 in 8,000. That's 20 times 20 times 20. It could happen, but you probably wouldn't want to bet your life on it on a one-time shot. Now consider this. Most estimates of the number of atoms in the known universe are around 10 to the power of 82, plus or minus a handful of zeros. This is a 1 followed by 82 zeros. That's the number of atoms that scientists estimate in the known universe. But the chance of pulling out 1,055 correct letters out of hats, each containing 20 letters, that's the number of amino acids that make up life, in just the right order is infinitely greater. What are the odds? 1 in 10 to the power of 1,373. That's one chance and one followed by 1,373 zeros. Let me remind you of what I've read in past programs from Bill Bryson, a man who believes in evolution. The chances of a 1,055 sequence molecule like collagen spontaneously self-assembling are frankly nil. It just isn't going to happen. And we are only talking here about one protein. As Bryson points out, no one really knows, but there may be as many as a million types of protein in the human body. And each one is a little miracle. And this isn't even the beginning of the beginning of the problems of life spontaneously generating any place in this universe, much less on this earth. Just maybe evolutionists don't have all the proof they want us to think they have. Maybe that is why they are trying to suppress teachers in the United States and elsewhere from teaching what is called intelligent design. The Apostle Paul predicted that there would be those who would deliberately suppress the truth of a creator God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Ancient King David rightly declared, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. If man is merely an evolutionary accident, there can be no real purpose in life other than to eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. But if a real God exists who made you and me as a deliberate act, then there can be a purpose for life. This key is foundational for all the others. So the first key to happiness and success is to know that there is a real Creator God. He is. He exists and He is interested in you.
So happiness key number one is there is a real Creator God. Discover Him. Happiness key number two is the God of creation is the God of love. Experience His love. My friends, look about you. What a wonderful home God has given man to live on and enjoy. Whether it is the deserts or the rainforest, mountains or valleys, we find beauty, a workable ecosystem, and the most amazing creatures. Whether we look at Hong Kong Harbor, the Swiss Alps, San Francisco Bay, the Canadian Rockies, or a thousand other places, we see beauty. Consider the endless variety of fruits, vegetables, and meats that God has given us to enjoy as food with all of their wonderful and different flavors. Consider color. Do we ever get tired of seeing a spectacular sunset or a rainbow? We take for granted the night sky with all the stars, but who is not fascinated by it all? Have you ever noticed that the moon is exactly the right size and distance from the earth, that it covers just enough of the sun during a solar eclipse that man is able to study the sun's corona? And speaking of the moon, it is just the right distance to give us tidal action, but not too much. Pictures from the moon looking back on Earth confirm that we live on a very unusual planet, an oasis in the desert landscapes of our solar system and beyond. Consider that God has a wonderful sense of humor. Have you ever watched a duck walk or smiled just a little bit at the antics of a chimpanzee or other primate? And then he gave us the platypus, a small Australian creature so bizarre that early naturalists considered it to be a hoax. It's a mammal, but it lays eggs. It has a bill like a duck, feet like an otter, and a body and tail like a beaver. The males also have a protective venomous spur on their hind foot. All features are most unusual, and God may have created this strange creature that doesn't seem to fit anywhere for no other reason than to give evolutionist fits trying to figure out how it could evolve and who were his ancestors. The Apostle John tells us God is love. And the greatest expression of this love is found in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you would like to discover more about how this topic impacts your life, visit us online at www.lcgcanada.org to read our featured literature free of charge. Hebrews 13.5 admonishes us to avoid greediness because God will be with us even in our darkest moments. As he affirms, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God knows you and He loves you. Jesus told us that when we pray to God, we are to address Him as our Heavenly Father. And just as our human fathers occasionally have to discipline us, so God sometimes has to discipline us for our own good. Even this is an expression of God's love. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by Him. For whom the Lord loves, He chastens, and scourges every son whom He receives. Our second key to happiness is that the God of creation, the God who made us, is the God of love. The more we get to know Him, the more we realize this truth. So happiness key number two is the God of creation is the God of love. Experience His love. Happiness key number three is God's love is expressed in His law. Obey Him. Many teenagers think that happiness will come to them if there are no constraints on their behavior, that happiness is doing whatever they want. They want freedom from parents, from school, from teachers and administrators. But will this kind of freedom bring them happiness? They think it will, but will it? This same mistake was made by our first parents. 
God tells us in the beginning chapters of the Bible that He created a man and a woman known as Adam and Eve. He gave them a great deal of freedom. He placed them in a beautiful garden full of all kinds of trees bearing fruits and nuts and told them that they can enjoy the fruits of all these trees, all except one. In the course of time, Satan the devil came along and convinced them that God, who gave them all these things, was holding out on them. If they would eat of that special tree, their eyes would be opened. They would be enlightened. They didn't need God telling them what to do because they could determine for themselves what is right and what is wrong. As all students of the Bible know, they listened to Satan and they ate of that tree. And the end result was disaster upon them and upon mankind in general. My friends, we have been choosing ever since to determine for ourselves what is right and what is wrong. And we still haven't gotten it figured out. Look at the results. War, violence, famines, sickness, financial hardships, and the list could go on and on. Divorce is rampant and children are torn away from parents. We always have to look over our shoulders to make sure someone is not robbing us or taking advantage of us, and the elderly are abused. Freedom is not what people think it is. The Apostle Peter warned us against individuals who offer freedom apart from the law of God. What we think to be freedom can, in fact, enslave us. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. A wave of what was called free love swept the Western world in the late 1960s and early 70s. Similar trends are occurring in China where generations of traditional values are being swept aside. But has the casting off of restraints brought real freedom to Western-style democracies or to China? Many think so, but let's examine the fruits of all this so-called freedom. Many modern diseases are totally preventable, but humanity refuses to prevent them. Take as examples STDs, HIV, AIDS, the human papillomavirus that can cause cervical cancer, syphilis, gonorrhea, and too many to mention. Every one of these is preventable. All we have to do is keep God's law. One of the major causes of divorce is adultery. Adultery is a violation of God's law. Anyone who thinks freedom and happiness come apart from the law of God believes a lie. The truth is that true freedom and happiness are found in staying within the boundaries of God's law. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Liberty and happiness come only through keeping all of God's laws. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do, as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. So happiness key number three is, God's love is expressed in His law. Obey Him. Happiness key number four is, God has a purpose for you, discover it. The great philosophers all sought in one way or the other meaning to life. For some it was merely to accept pain, suffering, and mortality. For others it was eat, drink, and be merry while one is alive and can do so. Others believe that life is a matter of stages, otherwise called reincarnation. If you are good, you might move up the chain of animal life. If you are bad, you might come back as a dog. Major religions believe that after death you either go to a place of paradise 
or to a place of everlasting punishment. Now, how can all these ideas be right? The answer is they can't. So what are we to believe? The Bible is a remarkable book like no other. Even though it was written over a period of 1,500 years in locations separated by 1,500 miles and by over 40 different writers, there's a central theme and message. It's written as poetry, song, and proverbs, and it's both historical and prophetic. Skeptics have scoffed at it, but archaeologists prove its accuracy time and again. Easy to understand prophecies have come to pass. This book claims to be the revelation of God who created us, and He does not leave us in doubt as to why we were given life. He tells us in the very first chapter of the Bible His purpose in our creation. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. What a profound statement. God made us to be like Him, made after His own image and likeness. The Apostle Paul quotes King David as asking this very important question. But one testified in a certain place saying, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? The verses that follow show that we are to be the children of God the Father and the brothers of Jesus Christ. And so that our ladies do not feel left out, I'll quote from 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, and verse 18. Here it tells us that women are to be the daughters of God. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. God has a purpose for you. Discover it. And when you come to understand it, your life will have lasting purpose and meaning. That's happiness key number four. Happiness key number five is God's way is the way of give. Learn to give. There are two ways of life, the way of give and the way of get. This world teaches the way of get. It's a philosophy of taking care of number one, meaning the self. We hear a great deal about self-interest, self-esteem, self-will, and self-actualization. Above all, we're told, be true to yourself, defend yourself, and get even if you are treated unjustly. But Jesus came teaching a radically different way. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Our nature tells us that this is not the way to go, that it's not a good idea. But the Bible tells us God is more than capable of rewarding us for choosing His way. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. In reality, the way of give is a law ordained by God. Even though it is counterintuitive, even though it goes against what our minds tell us, there is a greater reward in giving than taking. As the Apostle Paul explains, I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who are with me. I have shown you that in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the weak, And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that He said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And it is not just the Bible that tells us that people who give are happier than those who receive. Psychologists found how people spend their money is at least as important as how much of it they earn in the first place. The greatest joys of all they discovered can be attained by giving money away. 
either to someone they know or to charity. Find ways to help others with your time, your energy, your talents, and your resources. Practice God's way of outgoing concern for others. That's our fifth key to happiness. God's way is the way of give. Learn to give. As is the case with all Tomorrow's World programs, we only have time to scratch the surface of any subject. We have literature that goes into greater detail. And if you are truly interested in learning more about these subjects, please go to our website that will be shown momentarily, where you can download or, in some cases, order a hard copy of our literature. On today's program, Five Keys to Happiness, one of the keys is God has a purpose for you. You can discover more about this purpose by reading our publication, Your Ultimate Destiny. This is one of the most important pieces of literature we've ever written. When you think about it, what can be more important than knowing the purpose for your existence? Be sure to check it out on our website. And be sure to come back next week at the same time and station to learn more about the purpose of life and tomorrow's world, the Kingdom of God. Until then, goodbye, friends. If you would like to discover more about how this topic impacts your life, visit us online at www.lcgcanada.org to read our featured literature free of charge. The preceding program has been produced by the Living Church of God.